So here's a video response about a question we had in Physics 6A Mechanics. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tweak the numbers just because for technical reasons I can't use exactly the same problem. But if you try this on the homework problem, for example, it'll come out just fine. Okay? So let's say we have a 100 kilogram guy, and what he's going to do is he's going to jump straight down, and let's pick an easy number like 10 meters. Okay? And then the question I'm going to ask is, so the first thing I want to do is compute the impulse. But you remember from the review, there are two ways to do it. So number one, I can compute it like this, impulse is force times time. The second way I can do it, for example, is impulse, just by definition, is change in momentum. Since in this case, I don't really have the fo force when he's hitting the ground, I want to go ahead and use my first second definition. So change in momentum. So if I want to look at the change in momentum, you guys remember from the review, right? Change in momentum is going to be momentum final minus momentum initial. Okay, no big deal. Remember also momentum. Momentum was mass times velocity final minus mass times velocity initial. So I'm looking for something like this. Okay, easy. When he starts, he's pretty much still, right? And as he's falling, he goes, he hits a maximum speed right before he hits the ground. So this is where his momentum is going to be maximum. And then the instant that he hits the ground, all of a sudden he stops, right? So in this case, momentum final is going to be zero. Okay, what about momentum initial? What about the momentum right before he smacks the ground? So if I want that, all I need, I already know is mass. What I've got to do is get his velocity, right? And you remember from the review, basically the same setup as before, always think in terms of energy first. So if I'm thinking in terms of energy first, so potential initial plus kinetic initial is potential final plus kinetic final. And I do the same thing we did. So in the beginning, he's all potential, right? Because he's not moving at all. So no kinetic. But at the end, the instant before he hits the ground, he's going to be all kinetic and really no potential. Okay, so this one's really quickly. On the left, we'll have mgh. On the right, we're going to have 1 half mv squared. And I can actually go ahead and kill the m's, right? Then for gravity, I'm going to be cheap and put 10. You should put 9.8 on the exam. So 10 and a height of 10. 1 half v squared, right? And then just finish, just brute force computation. So you get square root of 200. So now I'm going to come back just to finish this. So my change of momentum, actual impulse, right? So let's finish. So it's 1 negative 100 times the velocity, square root of 200. Okay. So this would be the impulse. Okay. Depends on how picky the prof is. Maybe he'll want you to include the sign. That just means that if you made this direction positive, so you're going down, obviously the impulse has got to be the opposite, the negative, right? Otherwise you wouldn't stop. So the second part of the problem, and this is what I think people have more trouble with, was what happens if he jumps stiff-legged? And the second that he hits the ground, he actually, his body moves, say like one centimeter. Okay? So now let's say his body moves one centimeter during this process. Okay. Then the question was, so we have to be a little picky here, the question wasn't the impulse on his body, the question instead was, what was the force the ground applied to him? Okay, what was the average force the ground applied? And just to be cheap, because I don't want to write average everywhere, I'm going to put av this guy to represent average. Okay? So first, again, we're going to do it by impulse. So lots of different ways to do this. I like just go with this. Impulse is force times time. We already know the impulse. The impulse is something like 100 times root 200. Okay. I want to get the force, right? This time the force, I don't know. So I'm solving for this. But what I'm going to represent this as, this is the average force provided by the ground, but this is the average force causing that impulse. Okay? So it's a little bit different. Now I'm going to look over at the time. So I guess we need the time to finish this problem. Okay. So we'll think of it this way. So remember, the second before you hit the ground, your velocity, we said from before, this is the earlier part, was square root of 200. Okay, so this is before. Then, if you think about after you hit the ground, after, during the time this guy moves like this, the velocity changes to zero. Okay. So that tells me that my velocity is going from 200 to zero. Again, you don't have to do the integration. The cheap way around this is we'll average out. So if you want to compute the amount of time it takes you to do this fall, you can think of it as the usual thing, right? Velocity is what? Change in displacement over change in time. So just like we talked about, I could solve, solve for t, Multiply over here by t, divide by v, change in displacement over v. Okay. So I'm almost there. If I want the time, though, I know my displacement is going to be 1 centimeter. So it's got to be 0 0.01. The only trick is what velocity do I plug in? 
Okay? Since his velocity is fast right when he hits, but zero when he stops, so I've got to use an average velocity in there. In this case, because the acceleration is constant, you can make it really pretty. So I'm literally going to average these two velocities out. So I'll get something like the average velocity is square root of 200 divided by 2. Right? Okay. Then I'll just finish for time. So now time is going to be something like 0 0.01. All this is now is just retarded plug and chug. So this is root 200 over 2. Could work a little bit of math out. Not a big deal. We'll get something like this. Okay. Okay. So remember, my whole goal here was to come back and recompute the impulse Right? Or not the impulse, but sorry. Compute the force. We already have the impulse, so this we know. The force we're going to solve for it. Now I know the time. So all I'm going to do is come back and plug in. Okay, so the impulse was 100. Sorry, I erased it from the board. 100 times square root of 2. The force I have is here. 0 0.02 over square root of 200. Obviously, if you, when you're doing this on the exam, use a calculator. But in this case, I'm going to multiply both sides by square root of 200 and get something like 100 times 200 is equal to force times 0.02, okay? And then I can divide by that 0.02. Again, this is not physics, this is just arithmetic, and then we'll get our final answer, okay? So, you should do with the calculator, but if I finish this really quickly, 1, 2 gives me 1, 2, so the force should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Wow, a million newtons, okay? So, first setup. If you have your legs being stiff, the impulse just by brute force is going to be a million newtons. But remember, I think this is why people are confused in the answer from the online thing. This thing right here is not the force of the ground on you. This is the average force causing your impulse. So if you want to go back, so this is that early stuff in the first midterm. You want to figure out what the force on the ground is, let's just add them up. So if I do this piece by piece, So let's blow this picture up. So here's you hanging out, doing whatever. Here's the force of the ground pushing up on you, right? And in fact, this is really the normal force. So you snap, you could go straight into the ground because the ground doesn't want to give, it pushes back on you. Then there's gravity pushing you down, right? So on your body, ground is pushing up, mg is pushing down, but you know the overall effect of the force. That's what we computed here. That's going to be a million newtons. And we know that's a million newtons straight up. Otherwise, you wouldn't stop going down, right? So now I'm just going to decompose this. Where does this guy come from? There are only two real forces giving you this push. There's mg going down, and there's f ground going up. So technically, what I should have is f ground, right? And then mg. Now I'm just in the signs. Again, if I make up positive, your choice, right? With our system, we set up to be positive. Then mg should be going down. So I should have this guy. So now I have F ground minus mg will give you this force total, right? Then if I want to solve for F ground, then I have F ground is equal to F total. This is our million newtons over here, plus mg. Okay. This is technically the right answer. The answer that you guys have online says you can neglect this because we can even see that here. I mean, what's, what, what is that guy? That's something like, what is a thousand? mg would be 1,000 compared to a million, basically nothing. So that's what they did here. In the second setup, where they change it to something like a bigger distance or you're bending your knees, the computation runs exactly the same. But the second time you run it, this number is not nearly as big. So since these are almost the same size, you can't neglect this guy. Hopefully, if I have a chance, I'll come back and finish that for you. Thank you, everybody, for watching our Sportwood YouTube channel. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.